of the video, you saw the video, you saw the little boy from the beginning of his school career in preschool or kindergarten. He's starting to get in trouble because he can't sit still, he doesn't pay attention, the teacher sees his behavior as disruptive, disrespectful, she starts calling his mother. That sort of behavior starts to set him up for what we call the school to prison pipeline. So I want to go through what are the factors that contribute to that for this young man and so many black male youth in the United States. So let's start with, we heard him, his, uh, he's been expelled from school. This is basically, if you look at the diagram, what happens to too many students in the U.S. public school system, where they start to get in trouble in the classroom. By the time they get to a certain level, they're not performing as well as they should be. They start to lose interest in school, and so eventually they drop out. And we know what happens to dropouts. There's the world out there for them, for them to get into drugs, to get into crime. And so there begins the trajectory of so many young men. talked about being expelled from school. So there's a couple things that can happen to you in school. You can go through detention, where the teacher says, okay, you go to the principal's office, and you sit and wait this out. That's one form of discipline. You can be expelled. That is, they call your parents and tell you, take a few days off from school to cool down. Or you could be suspended. That is, you're kicked out of the school. So, black youth in America are disproportionately represented on all three counts. They tend to be detained more, they're expelled more, and they are suspended. And one of the statistics here is 48% of black children in preschool, we're not even talking primary school, we're talking preschool, 48% of black children have had one or more school suspensions. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Aren't you just playing in kindergarten? Aren't you coloring and, and maybe reading? How are you getting suspended? But we're talking about almost half of these children have more than one suspension. Not just one, but multiple suspensions. Okay? So, look at another statistic. 40.3% of all black public school students have one or more. So once you leave preschool, and you go to primary and secondary school, the suspension rate remains very, very high. You're suspended from school, what are you gonna do? You, you can't follow your lessons, you can't keep up. You're at home, your parents are upset with you, and so you start to get into trouble. So one of the things we talk about in this whole school to prison pipeline is implicit or unconscious bias. Has anybody heard those terms before? Any psychology majors here? No? Sociology? Okay, you don't count. <laughs> so when we talk about implicit or unconscious bias, we all have them. It's how we think about people who are different from us. So our thoughts, our feelings about that person or group of persons 
it affects the way we treat that person. Unfortunately for young black boys in the classroom, many teachers have very negative perceptions of them. Behavior that would be considered normal boy behavior gets perceived as being naughty, bad, rude, disrespectful, and that's what gets them kicked out of the classroom. And we have, this is a cartoon that tells kind of what we're talking about. When you look at, they're doing the same exact behavior. They're smoking marijuana. Our perceptions of one, oh, that's just a hippie. He's just hanging out, he's having a good time. But when we see a young black person engaged in this exact same behavior, they become a criminal. And I wish I would, could say this story ends there, but it doesn't. So implicit bias on behalf of teachers has an impact on the classroom where teachers are automatically or unconsciously looking at the boys with a different lens. They're saying, hey, you're bad, you're disrespectful, I'm not going to tolerate your behavior, which might be considered normal behavior. You know little boys in classrooms, how do they usually act? A little hyper, they're kind of moving around in their seat. That is normal child behavior, but it doesn't get seen the same way when it's a little black boy behaving that way. So here we have another problem in the classroom. So I'm not going to read this whole thing. If you can see it, you can um, go through it for yourself. This is a true story of a young black boy. 